If you haven't noticed yet, SpaceX is very good at building rockets, but they can also destroy it in a split second. Indeed, the unmistakable evidence of this reality became vividly apparent as we witnessed the fiery explosions illuminating the skies over at Starbase. Some notable prototypes include Ship 24, B7, SN10, and SN8. But that's not all. SpaceX has also deleted many prototypes even before before they had a chance to shine. And most recently, Ship 27. Remember that one? The peculiar prototype that was naked? As all of our attention was focused on B9 rolling to the launch site and being lifted onto the OLM, Ship 27 was cut in half to be scrapped. And it wasn't even tested beforehand. So why go through all the process of making this, this prototype? What could be the reason behind their decision to dismantle a seemingly operational and flawless prototype? In reality, its common dome appeared to have imploded. It's unknown if it was simply human error and pressure being lost, or if this was a design error and SpaceX is moving on from the design. Regardless of the circumstances, it was what sealed Ship 27's fate. It could be likely that Ship 26 will be scrapped in the near future as well. But more importantly, it's time to say goodbye to SN15. It was cut at the forward dome section weld, and scraping had begun. The pressure lines on it were also coming off. This ship is part of history and deserves to be put on display. Hoppy and SN15 are key pieces of flight hardware that have paved the way for future vehicles. They need to be preserved. At the same time, a reinforced booster forward tank section was spotted. This is the B-12 hot stage load head. Quite a mouthful. This is likely to be used for structural verification testing of the hot staging ring section. The full tank will look like this. Thanks to the space engineer for this rendering. As far as we can tell, SpaceX canceling some of its prototypes does not mean the company is backing down. Down. Also recently, SpaceX moved B-10 to Massey's test facilities for its own cryogenic proof test, partially filling the tanks. Once SpaceX completed this test, they moved the booster back to the production site, and Ship 28 was attached to a thrust simulator and moved to Massey's test facility. It's highly likely that for the third integrated test flight, which may very well be the first full orbital attempt, Ship 28 and Booster 10 will fly together. SpaceX could now be looking at performing a static fire test with B9 in the coming days, which will be a true test for the launch mount and new water deluge system. Next, a NASA procurement document provided details about plans of transforming Starship into a space station in a source selection document published several weeks after the original announcement of the collaboration agreements on June 15th. What's still unclear is whether SpaceX is looking at ideas to turn the entire internal volume of Starship into a pressurized habitat for people, which would require major advancements in manufacturing and assembly in orbit to convert empty propellant tanks into a home for astronauts, researchers, or space tourists. On the other hand, Starship's crew cabin, which is already voluminous, may be able to eventually support long-duration stays in low Earth orbit with a suitable life support system. The vehicle could also be fitted with external mounting plates for unpressurized experiments. In the source selection statement, Phil McAllister, who heads NASA's Commercial Spaceflight Division, wrote that SpaceX's proposal would provide capabilities to support NASA's need for a commercial space station after the retirement of the ISS. The proposed Starship capability in terms of size and reduced cost could have a far-reaching impact on the sustainable development of the LEO economy, McAllister wrote. Adding increased confidence is the company's plan to self-fund Starship development from its launch and satellite enterprises, McAllister wrote in a section discussing SpaceX's business approach for the Starship space station effort. The only weaknesses in the proposal were the lack of a schedule to field its new capabilities and involving NASA in its milestones. Overall, strengths outbalance weaknesses. On technical grounds, NASA said SpaceX's plan has strengths in its use of existing systems, demonstrated technical competence, competence and low dependence on other companies or organizations. But McAllister wrote that SpaceX's proposal was short on details about the concept and lacked information on technical
technical risks, or the schedule for how Starship could be used for crew transportation to low Earth orbit, or as an orbiting space station within the next five to seven years, one of NASA's goals guiding the collaborative commercial space agreements. Nevertheless, NASA isn't putting any skin in the game with this program, and the agency determined the technical strengths also outweigh the proposal's weaknesses. Turning a rocket into a space station is not something new. In 1960, NASA already explored this idea, and in fact, the generated concept could be useful for SpaceX. Although the idea was there, it did not become a reality. In fact, after the success of Apollo 11, this project was completely scrapped. NASA has offered non-financial support to other independent projects as well, including Blue Origin's crew spacecraft, Northrop Grumman's research platform, and other initiatives from companies like Sierra Space, Think Orbital, and Special Aerospace Services. What's more notable is that NASA just awarded a $35 million contract to Blue Origin in Kent for solar power on the moon. The agency announced on July 25th the selection of 11 awards through its Tipping Point program of space technology development. The awards, with a combined value of $150 million, are designed to advance promising technologies to the point where they are ready for flight. By creating new opportunities for streamlined awards, we hope to push crucial technologies over the finish line so they can be used in future missions, Prasoon Desai, Acting Associate Administrator for Space Technology at NASA said in a statement. These innovative partnerships will help advance capabilities that will enable sustainable exploration on the moon. Among the winners is Blue Origin, which received a $34.7 million award to demonstrate the ability to produce solar cells using lunar materials. That'll support progress on its Blue Alchemist project the company unveiled earlier this year, where it used lunar simulant material to produce solar cells in a terrestrial lab. Blue Alchemist is a proposed end-to-end -end scalable autonomous and commercial solution that produces solar cells from lunar regolith, which is the dust and crushed rock abundant on the surface of the moon. This process also produces oxygen as a useful byproduct for propulsion and life support. The key advance made by Blue Alchemist is that its engineers and scientists have taken the byproducts of this reaction, and these materials alone, to fabricate solar cells as well as the protective glass cover that would allow them to survive a decade or longer on the lunar surface. Blue Origin recently split its Advanced Development Programs business unit into two units, with one focused on in-space systems such as its orbital reef space station, and another focused solely on lunar activities. It's exciting to see Blue Origin begin to publicly discuss its plans for a fully reusable lunar architecture. The company has been hiring actively in this area for years, and there is much interesting work like Blue Alchemist going on behind the scenes. This is NASA's sixth round of tipping point grants. Each company receiving a grant is expected to cover a minimum percentage of the total project cost, which is at least 10 to 25 percent based on the company's size. NASA's investment in this newest round is expected to amount to $150 million over the course of a period lasting up to four years. Ultimately, we can only hope that the companies honored with these awards will demonstrate their utmost dedication to executing the plans they have outlined. Otherwise, it'd be disheartening to see the hard-earned tax dollars of the American people go to waste. Well, folks, that wraps up our show for today. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. And as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.